What is ApoB? If you've never heard of it, you're in pretty good company, although you've heard what it's a marker for. So apolipoprotein B, and lipo just means fat, you know what a protein is, so you put them together, and those are how your body gets cholesterol through your body, and apolipoprotein B is specifically a marker for the types of lipoproteins that can cause heart disease or atherosclerosis. So when you talk about your total cholesterol number, then you know you talk about the HDLs, those are considered the, the good cholesterol. So when you're measuring your apolipoprotein B, affectionately shortened to ApoB to make it easier to pronounce, um, it's not looking at all at the HDL. So it's not looking at the good cholesterol. So that's to the side, but that, that ApoB marker is looking at the potential atherogenic, so atherosclerosis, meaning heart disease. So these lipoproteins that, when too high, can create heart disease. And so that marker, the ApoB marker, is something that a lot of doctors don't utilize. And so uh, we've been talking, you know, it went from what's your total cholesterol? And everybody talked about total cholesterol. And I was like, no, that's not good enough. You really have to know the breakdown of the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol. And so then that's not quite good enough because you need to know in the bad cholesterol, there's, there's LDLs and then there's VLDL. So low density, these lipoproteins and very low density. And then it was, then it was that's not good enough because in the bad cholesterol, the, the LDLs and VLDLs, sometimes you can have fluffier particles, which are more innocuous, and then you can have dense particles, and those are the ones that start building up plaque. And so we've had this metamorphosis and understanding heart disease and atherosclerosis, and, and the, the latest evolution, and, and I don't mean latest like this happened yesterday, this is several years that we've known this, but measuring ApoB, in your annual blood panel is not something a lot of doctors are up to snuff on. And so I wanna bring this to your attention so the next time you have your physical, you ask your doctor to please add that to your physical so you know where you are for this very important measurement. Because the ApoB again is showing these bad cholesterols that can create plaque. But as I so often say on this channel that What's good for heart disease is good for obesity, is good for diabetes, is good for basically long life. And the same is true here. So there was a research study done in The Lancet in 2021, and they, they looked at the fact of keeping this ApoB in a healthy range not only decreased your risk of heart attack and stroke, but decreased your risk of type 2 diabetes and also extended your life. So. Uh, it's a great marker, not just for heart disease, although that is our number one killer, but for other things that are taking our lives that, um, so it's an, it's an important marker for you to know where do you stand. Now, normal is considered under 90 milligrams per deciliter, and so it would just be MG slash DL, that's just the way they, they measure it. So under 90 is considered a safe number. If you are at high risk, if you already have a cardiovascular history, then you want it under 80, so a little bit more stringent if you have that history. So how do you, how do you keep it lower? Um, there was a great study, this was done in 2016, where they reviewed 87 studies looking at how to keep this ApoB in good shape, so you're lowering your risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, overall extending your life. Number one was weight loss if necessary, of course. Now 70% of us are overweight or obese, so 70% of the population falls within this category. And in this study, they lowered the weight by six to 12%, yep, six to 12%, and they found that was a good um, influence on the ApoB. The other thing they did was they reduced um, saturated fat, so they increased unsaturated fat. So you have monounsaturated fat, you have polyunsaturated fat. In the monounsaturated fat arena, you've got two of my favorite foods, avocado and olive oil. And then in the polyunsaturated, things like uh, chia seeds and flax seeds, um, walnuts, omega-3, fatty acids, so the, what's found in fish oil as well as in algae. So that's a plant base of, of the omega-3. So 
those types of fats, so lowering the saturated fat found in fatty meats and uh, butter and increasing the unsaturated fat, both monounsaturated and polyunsaturated, those foods shifting more to that uh, was also lowering this very important marker, marker of ApoB. The next factor they looked at was increasing your soluble fiber because soluble fiber likes to glom onto the bad cholesterol and pull it out of the body. And so some foods that are high in soluble fiber are apples, eggplants, okra, oats, uh, barley, if you're not avoiding gluten, what did I forget, oh, psyllium, and oh, berries, yeah, berries and eggplant, also some of my favorite foods. So these are high in soluble fiber, and they're gonna also reduce the ApoB. So those were the three strong factors they found when they evaluated all these 85 different studies. Also, the, and, and also mentioned <laughs> was phytosterols, those are found in nuts, found in nuts and seeds, um, also soy protein as a, as a benefit to lowering ApoB, and then high fructose on the other hand was found to increase ApoB and, um, oh, and trans fats. So we have so much less trans fat, thankfully, in our food now because it's been um, outlawed. <laughs> so you don't see too much trans fat uh, other than in a little bit in certain meat. So that's less of a problem in our society, fortunately. But that's something to avoid. The high fructose uh, sweeteners were, uh, you know, mostly the colas and, and those types of foods that we know are not good for us. So no big surprise that they're not good for the cholesterol marker either. And then in a nutshell, they looked at, okay, what's the, what's the best dietary pattern if we were going to be able to put a name on it? And of course, as is so often the case, the Mediterranean diet one, um, it, it's inherently high in um, the soluble fiber, it's high in the uh, monounsaturated fats, it tends to help with weight loss overall. Um, and you know, just doesn't doesn't have the the um, simple carbs. It it doesn't have the highly processed carbohydrates. It, it's not a diet rich in sweets. So these factors of the Mediterranean diet makes it overall a nice dietary pattern to get that ApoB down. But you don't know where yours is until you get it measured. So I very much encourage you to ensure that the next time you have a physical, or if you just are curious and you know your health is not exactly where you want it to be and you really want to start having this as a measurement because it is considered the best metric. So you can, you can ask your doctor and go to a Quest or go to a LabCorp and just get it measured and see, and see where you stand. Much in the way of, of when you get your annual physical, this would be a fasting uh, blood draw. So you do it first thing in the morning and, and really get this measurement. So um, a really key metric that your doctor should be measuring if he or she is not, you can get them up to speed and, and tell them about it. And um, again, just an important factor to know about for your health and all the benefits of how to lower it are generally good rules of thumb for, for overall health anyway. So if, you're, um, if you like this content, give, it a, give, give the channel a thumbs up and subscribe so more people can get this data. I do try to bring to light the things that people are not aware of or not aware of enough, uh, not appreciating how valuable certain things are that are not necessarily sexy. What can I say? There's a lot of clickbait out there of, you know, oh, you just do this. What's the, what's the one thing you can do? And it's never, it's not, not even really, it's never about a single thing that you can do. It's, it's a combination of things that need to be done for these bodies to attain optimal health. And there's not a perfect diet for anybody. Uh, we're all a little bit different, but there are common truths and that's what I focus on. Here in the clinic, we focus very personalized, very individualized programs tailored to every person that comes in. But on the channel, I like to talk about general truths and facts that we know based on good, strong science that are not clickbaity, are not like the latest thing or, you know, do this for fat loss, but, but overall, like what do these bodies need to really retain and maintain the best health? And that's what we're about here at Root Cause.